Today I'm going to be teaching you guys the algorithm that's behind the logarithm function. Now, you might be thinking, hmm, I just always had the logarithm function available to me, either as a library function in code or on my calculator. But I'm going to teach you guys what actually happens behind the scenes with a logarithm function. And I want to start off by saying that the definition that they teach you in school is correct, but it's a little bit more complex than it needs to be. And I'm going to show you guys a more simple definition right now, and we're going to try it out. Okay, so I'm proposing to you guys that the definition of log is the amount of times that you can divide a number x by another number b. So let's look at an example. Let's say log, where the base is 2, of 100, okay? And we're going to find out what that equals. And my definition was the amount of times you could divide 100 by 2, right? So let's try that out. I'm going to start off 100 over 2 equals 50. So that's once. We can divide once so far. And we take that 50 and we divide that by another 2. We get 25. Okay, so we reached the end of our algorithm chain. And we're going to reach the end of our algorithm chain when we hit a number that starts with 1. And the reason for that is because the alternative is you continue dividing, but you can do that infinitely. So there's nothing to gain from doing that. Okay, so again, according to my definition that I just gave you guys, the answer to log base 2 of 100 is the amount of times we divided until our algorithm ran. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So again, According to what I just told you guys, the answer to this function is 6. Okay, so what does this all mean? Log base 2 of 100 is 6. Okay, now I'm going to tie it back into the idea of exponents, okay? So when you take the base and multiply it by the amount of times you divide it, what you're doing is exponentiating. You're, you're multiplying 2 by itself 6 times to get to a number near 100. 2 to the power of 6 is 64. So that's interesting. What this means is that we need to multiply 2 by itself at least 6 times. So this answer that we got to is a minimum bound more than it is the actual answer. We know now that we have to multiply 2 by itself at least 6 times to get near 100. Now, what's an upper bound? Okay, we have the lower bound, 2 to the power of 6. The upper bound is the next number, 7. 2 to the power of 7, right? 2 to the power of 7 equals 128. So now we know that the answer to our function should be more than 6 and less than 7. Because if the answer was 7, we would be overshooting and we would be passing over 100. So to get to 100, we need an exponent that's in between 6 and 7. And let's see that in practice. Let's see the actual result of the log function. Okay, so we go to log calculator, and we do log base 100, log base 2 of 100, and we see that our answer is in between 6 and 7. So we're definitely heading in the right direction. All right, so what do we make of all of this? The main idea here is that the logarithm is literally a function that defines the exponent that you need to get from the base to x. That is the definition of the logarithm. And now we're going to see how to fully define that using binary search. So that's how we're going to get our um, exponent to be exactly where it needs to be. So before we found out that our exponent is in between 6 and 7, right? So now how do we proceed? Like what can we possibly do to get a more precise exponent? Well, the only reasonable thing we can do is try different exponents. Okay, and the only reasonable thing to try right now is the number in the middle of 6 and 7, 6.5. All right, so let's say in general we have this left bound, which equals 6 right now, and we have this right bound, which equals 7. Okay, 6, 7. We said we're going to try taking the average of the two, which equals 
and let's see where that gets us, okay? So we're going to try this exponent. 2 to the power of this should get us closer to 100. Let's see that. Calculator. Let's see where that gets us. Okay. 2 to the power of 6.5 should get us closer to 100 than either 6 or 7. And that's exactly what we see. 2 to the power of 6 was 64. 2 to the power of 7 is 128. 2 to the power of 6.5 is 90, which is the closest to 100. All right, so now we're going to redefine our boundaries, okay? Now we have more information using our guess. We know now that the exponent has to be at least 6.5 because we came short of 100. So we need to increase the exponent just a little bit so we can get to 100 because we came short of it. So we know that our left bound now is at least 6.5. So let's redefine our boundaries. Bam. Okay, now let's do this step again. Let's take the average, so now L is 6.5, uh, R is 7 still, didn't change. Let's take the average of that, we get 6.75. Alright, so let's try this again, okay? 6.75 should get us closer to 100 than even 6.65 did. And we see that it does. Now we're only 7 away from 100, before we were 10 away from 100. And the interesting thing to note here is we overshot now. So what that means is that we have to change our boundaries such that the right boundary decreases this time. So if you look, we know our answer is less than 6.75 now. Okay. So we're going to keep using these steps until we get to an exponent that gets us very, very close to 100, satisfactorily close to 100. So that actually ends up being, I did this off screen, that ends up being around 6.64. And if you look, we got very close to 100. Cool. Now, let me show you guys the codified version of what I just told you. All right, so here's our code. Okay, and the things I want to highlight are first the simple log function. So this simple log function is what I was explaining to you guys in the first half of the video. This is how you calculate the six. Okay, the amount of times that you can divide x by b is calculated by just seeing how many times you can divide it until you get to one. Okay, and that is the exponent. That is the simple exponent, okay? And then, here is the binary search that you perform to get a more granular exponent. If you look, this is exactly what we did before. We took the simple logs answer, right? We had, we started off this page right here with six, which is the answer to the simple log function. Then we assigned the right bound as seven. Okay, then what we did is we tried a new exponent that should be more precise according to our estimation, right? So cursor is the exponent itself. We got 6 and 7 and divided by 2 to get 6.5. That is the value that you see here. Then we got the actual value that that results in. So we came out to 90. 2 to the power of 6.5 is 90. And then we're going to compare that result, that guess, to our actual number, 100, over here. And based on that, we're going to adjust our boundaries, okay? So if the guess was an overshoot, right, if you remember, if the guess was an overshoot, 6.75 was an overshoot, we lowered the right boundary. So you can see that we're resetting the right boundary. If it was an undershoot, we do the opposite. We increase the left boundary. And that keeps repeating. Now, there's one more thing to note about this code. It does not run forever. And the way that we make it avoid running forever is that we allow a uh, precision. Okay. We say that if our guess is off by like one billionth, that's fine. Just return the exponent anyway. So as you saw with 6.64, which resulted in 99.7 something something, we're going to just pretend that that's okay enough. That's okay enough for us. And we're going to say that 6.64 is our answer. That's what this precision is for. Okay, so 
That's everything I wanted to teach you guys about the logarithm function. Now, if the world ended and you for some reason had to recreate math, you can be confident in yourself knowing that you can redefine the log function. And that's the beautiful takeaway from all of this. Okay, thank you guys for watching and tune in for the next video.